Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We head straight to looking at the pages of a national daily this morning. We have GD Johnson joining us via Zoom. GD Johnson, thank you so much for being part of the show. Good morning, Messi, and good morning to our. Let's start with the paper in front of us, and we have the daily independent newspaper. Criticism trails federal government's plan to ban Okada to check insecurity. As boldly written on the Daily Independent, respondent says government bereft of ideas to tackle terrorism. Arag Bashola says heads to roll after submitting Kuje attack report. Hmm, let's see how that pans out. And divestment, federal government urges indigenous firms to take over IOC's assets. EFCC to arraign former AGF orders today over 109 billion naira alleged scam. IPO places 2 million naira bounty on Imo Ebubiago commander. Says there's no seated home today. ICPC to prosecute 3,000. 657 civil servants over IPPIS. The head of services is quoted to say, and reps ask BPE to hold sale of five power plants. Jam releases court of points for 2022 admission. And we're looking at uh, 140 as court of point for universities and 100 as a court of points for uh, colleges of Education and Polytechnics. Passengers vandalize Dana Airport property at Lagos Airport. I take that again. Passengers vandalize Dana Air property at Lagos Airport. Airline commences operational audits. And just before we move away from the Daily Independent newspaper, 6.7 trillion fuel subsidy for 2023 will deny country capital projects. That's what the federal government is saying. It says debt servicing surpasses revenue by 310 billion naira in four months. Adeleke, that's the governor elect, raises the alarm over plot to loot and divert government asset. Let's move away from. The Daily Independent newspaper, as we pay attention to the nation. Federal government considers fresh measures to end terrorism. Ways Okada ban to cripple insurgents' movement. Mining suspension likely to court funding. And what, I mean, the, the, the next question would be, we thought we were big on illegal mining, and so... Uh, why is mining going on? Have, why haven't we clamped on those who are mining illegally? AGF, terrorist shift to mining, ransom taking to raise funds. That's what you find. As a strike, 560 billion naira more needed to pay varsity teachers. And uh, Nigeria orders got $14 billion COVID-19 cash, says the World Bank. Federal government takes 3,657 civil servants before the ICPC over IPPIS and uh, 200 criminal suspects arrested in 24 days. That's what you find on the nation. The punch would say 6.7 trillion naira fuel subsidy, revenue falls by 1.89 trillion naira. Nigerian face tough at times. I mean, just imagine what would be going on. Uh, so fuel subsidy projection for 2023 would definitely, we're looking at uh, 6.7 trillion naira for fuel subsidy and revenue falls by 1.89 trillion as Nigerians face tougher times. That's in the Punch newspaper. States, federal government will be crippled, says Finance Commissioners Forum. Using revenue, service, subsidy, debt, orders, dangerous, experts are quoted to say. Federal government 
Spending deficit increases to 3.09 trillion naira, says report. And NYSC mourns as two core members die in crash. INEC records 334 pre-election court cases. JAM releases court off, says admission ends December the 31st. And, and, and the people are saying, you have a backlog of those who should have started. <laughs> Lagos policemen assaults and rob driver of 50,000 naira. It's a lot going on in this country. Stranded woman begs nursing mother for accommodation and sells baby or steals baby. I like to see that closely. Okay. And again, court permits NGOs to pursue Tunumbu's prosecution. Power generation crashes to three megawatts and federal government probes begins. DSS reports once against protests against Gigi tells the NLC. And just before we move away from the punch newspaper this morning, pension operators invest 1.99 trillion naira via bank placement. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on uh, the punch newspaper. We'll just quickly look at the Guardian and we have GJ Johnson join the conversation. Nigeria on fiscal cliff as debt service trances revenue. Petrol subsidy nears 6.7 trillion naira. Fiscal deficit exceeds 3 trillion naira in four months. 78% of federal government spending goes into debt payment and personnel costs. Fresh modalities for NNPC's remittance to the FAAC on the way. And labor governors agree on subsidy removal behind closed doors, says Agba. Uh, blames the increasing global energy costs for price instability. Well, this, there has to be a blame. Benway APC candidate protests against substitution of names on INEC portal. And Muslim Muslim tickets, General Overseer threatens fire for inclusion on list of unknown clerics. <laughs> Sue candidates with false credentials, INEC tells Nigerians and tackles 334 pre-election cases. Delta PDP at a crossroad as two claim Gubo candidate. Oh, too much for us to bear as a country. Nigeria's slow, tedious road to herbal medicine development. Uh, okay. Rep supposes sale of five power plants. Chaotic scene at Lagos Airport as stranded travelers protest Dana air closure. You have some quarter saying uh, probably would have experienced destruction of you know properties belonging to the airline. That's so much we can take this morning. On the front pages of a national dailies that's been made available by our paper vendor, we have G.D. Johnson joining the conversation. G.D. Johnson, thank you so much for being part of the show. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you. Let's, let's start with the review of um, the position of federal government in banning Okada and the And the reason for that is security in order to continue the use of Okada for insecurity in this country. Well, I listened to the Attorney General yesterday. The government was calling for sacrifice of Nigerians that only 20% of Nigerians use Okada. And in those 20% Nigerian and should be able to make enough the, the needed sacrifices for over 200 million Nigerians. I wonder where the Attorney General got his data from. But only 20% of Nigeria. These people live in the cocoon of their of their self-delusion. It's, it's over 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 80 percent of Nigerians use of Qatar. That's the reality. How many, how many streets? How many areas could be assessed 
with with very good other than Okada in Nigeria. Well, um, let's read and see the what the implication of um, this ban we have on, on 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 transport system, on movement of goods and services, and then on distribution and logistic matters. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a lazy, a lazy approach for government to zero and its reductionism for them to zero it down to 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 Okada alone. Um, is it only Okada that these people used to perpetrate to perpetrate their their heinous crime? How do they move in? How do they move in their 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 guns and other arms and ammunition that they they, they use? It's, it's just the failure of the security system. That's 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 just my take. It has nothing to do with that, but it has to do with the, the failure of the intelligence community, the failure of the security network that we have that we have in this in this country. As a result of that, a lot of people are going to face that consequence. Apart from that, the economic implication of this ban, there's no way. You see, this Okada. It's a major employer of labor. The unfortunate thing is that these people live in Asu Rock, they live in Maitama, they live in Asu Koro, they live in places where Okadas are not allowed, one, two. They have never entered public transport in the last seven, eight years, some of them in the last 24 years. But some of them in the capital, and I can't recall the last time they entered Okada, because some of them have been in government since 1999. And it is government that has been taking care of their responsibility, that has been taking care of their family. So they are far, far away from reality. There are a lot of people that have been employed, that are engaged through the use of A lot of artisans are driving Okada because most of them don't have power to pursue their their various their their streets. So um, I think government needs to give it a second look and to give it a Second thought. Otherwise, this particular attempt will surely backfire. Although they said they are winning, they are winning. What we need to do is to review and rejig our security architecture. There are other countries. They write back in other countries. Why is there no insurgency in Ghana? Why is it not in neighboring country like Togo? Why is it not in Guinea? Why is it not in Mali? Why is it not in Senegal? Why is Nigeria there? Why is it not in Cameroon? Why is it in Nigeria? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Who are those that benefit from these criminal activities, this crime against humanity and crime against the state? These are the questions we need to ask. Who are the beneficiaries? Who are the sponsors? And let's make an example of this, of this element that have, that have constituted a major nuisance and a major addict for a lot of families in Nigeria, other than resorting to banning that's a lazy, a lazy, a lazy man approach to solving the problem. And that's reductionism. That's what I take on that. Um, another story related to that is the Minister of Interior saying that eggs will roll after submitting the report. We don't need, we don't need any. It is said that if you don't want to solve any problem, set up the committee. If you don't want to get to the root cause, the government wants to buy time for the attention span of people to go over a critical issue, set up a panel, and give them weeks to come up with their report so that the attention span of people will gloss over that particular, over that particular, over that particular matter. Now, why should he be telling us that to rule? Nobody has resigned. Nobody has been arrested. Nobody has been prosecuted. No. So it's just business, business as usual. You can imagine seven that voted money for CCTV to be provided in all our prison is expressing shock and disillusion that CCTV is not were not available at Kujé prison. How far is Kujé to the National Assembly? Who are those that are responsible for the function? Do they carry out their oversight function in this city, this correctional facility? Do you know that the monies that have been budgeted for CCTV and other, other infrastructural developments that are required in these places? 
whether this money has, has actually been disbursed and whether what they are meant for they be used for. Everybody is tracking, tracking the budget to see whether actually there is compliance with budgetary provisions. So it shocked the way express, and as usual, in no matter in little while, Nigerians' attention will move away from Koji. It will go to uh, other NGO like hiring of bishops or hiring of teachers or hiring of teachers and the rest of it. So, see, look at you know part of that conversation that talks about uh, the federal government considering as a means of curbing insecurity. Uh, that's on the punch, it's still on the punch. And, uh, you know, the Daily Independent as well, majorly on the Daily Independent newspaper, right? But the second part of it talks about uh, the funds for this terrorist. And they've been very big on uh, mining activities. To agree with that, because no. there's been, there's been uh, G.D. Johnson, a, a little bit of some kind of uh, maybe story to it. Uh, because of the reports, no. because of the reports that's been made available, that mining yeah. is a global concern. And because it's a global concern, you have some sect who are involved in illegal mining because the government will not pay attention or they've, they've been excluded, you know, from mining activities. And so this terrorist actually understand they get into bed with them, some sort of collaboration, because you need to actually put out the goods majorly in uh, West Africa and Central Africa. Uh, there are reports from different intergovernmental agencies as well as, uh, you know, independent reports as regards that collaboration. But in, in, in all of this is that, don't we know, don't we have the identity of those who are involved in illegal mining? I mean, don't we know that people are involved in it? How come we haven't apprehended them if this is a market? And on the other hand, do you think that if the government cuts off, uh, bans Okada, as it's been called nationwide, it would curb insecurity? You see, you are, you are still waiting for the list that was given to Nigeria by you, your sponsors of Boko Haram. For more than two years now, two, three years, we have not seen the list. Not a single person, not a single sponsor has been identified. Not a single sponsor has been prosecuted. The list was provided. And nothing has been done with respect to that. Now, we have different mechanisms that have been put in place by central government to track the flow of illegal, illegal form and illegal money, illicit, illicit money in, 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 in our financial uh, sector. But that, it seems to that I engage in this type of business are spirits that cannot be tracked, that cannot be traced, because you have people, there are different types of um, cashless policy and the rest of it. These are policies that have been designed over, over time to curtail um, this criminals and these terrorists having access, having access to credit and having access to, to, to the phone. On the issue of illegal mind, all you need to do is to watch in their movies. Movies are reflections of reality. Mining, you, 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 you see, you, I, don't, I just don't know what to say because it's, the, more, the more you look, the less, the less you see. You recall about the case of um, in Zamfara State, where they were mining, and where mining, as a result of mining, which led to the death of about 52 children or thereabout, illegal gold mining that um, that later led to the what I, I, I can't recall the case specifically, but it was a result of illegal mining in Zamfara. Over 52 children died. Nothing was the, the perpetrators of those illegal mining that led to the water and the way in those communities being contaminated. I've not been dealt with. Just this last week, 
We saw a wanted terrorist being given Chintasni title in Zamfara State. Does he not have an identity? We knew the people that attended his Tobani. So, for as far as I'm concerned, the government itself is paying the service to, to, to deal with this issue. Because all you need to do is to go to the left and right of Nigeria. You say solid media belong to federal government, but you have situation whereby this national this national treasure are being mined by individual. You recall there was a particular case in the southwest where a prominent traditional ruler openly slapped another traditional ruler over over territory. These issues are to do with rights to 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 natural resources, to solid minerals, and the rest of it. So as far as I'm concerned, the government is just paid it down. Not a single person has been prosecuted with respect to that. And that and that's the and that's that's the reality. All you need to do because movies are reflecting of what happens in the society or what will likely happen in the society. There are movies that have predicted COVID outbreak before COVID, COVID outbreak. There are movies that predicted 9-11 before 9-11 before 9-11 happened. So we've seen movies that have reflected what is going on in society and what will surely happen with national treasure. And if you watch this movie, you see that there's an organized crime. On an organized crime that state actors are involved in. And I'm not too sure Nigeria is not an essential. All right, Jide Johnson, let's look at the Guardian newspaper now. On the Guardian newspaper, it talks about Nigerian fiscal cliff as a debt service trances revenue. It is a huge one uh, because, uh, according to the government, petrol subsidy is very close to, we're looking at 6.7 trillion naira, and fiscal deficit exceeds 3 trillion in four months. 78% uh, of government spending goes into debt payment and personal debt. cost. It's a lot. Debt servicing and personal cost. Debt servicing. What um, we just need to do is to look at the convoy of ministers of president of, of the president of the governor of the heads of ministries and departments and agencies of government and then you see that we have a lot of wastages we have a lot of wastages as you can see from the record 78 percent of the time now i want to ask this question and i want this and i want the government to who is subsidizing who? And what is being subsidized? Because the issue of this petroleum subsidy, no one seems to understand. When the present government was outside government, the present government was accusing the previous government of corruption with matters relating to subsidy. Unfortunately, this government has spent more money on subsidy than any government in history. Now, one of if we are going to spend six point seven trillion on subsidy, let them remove the subsidy next year. Spend the said six point seven trillion on on refinery. Build new refinery. Now you could see the implication of the collapse, the near collapse of our oil and gas industry. You see the way it has affected the aviation industry. You knew what happened with with with, with Dana yesterday. When passengers went on rampage, we knew what it has, what 
what it has caused in, in air travel in Nigeria. I listened to the vice president of the Airline Owners Association where he said, if this, if this issue of jet fuel is not dealt with, it will cripple the aviation sector. Now you ban the Okada, you will cripple the aviation sector. You rail system, people we need the rail system has not connected all the part states and region of Nigeria. The roads are in a state of dilapidation, complete collapse. Then what will happen to us as a country? If the attention is proper attention is not paid to the oil and gas sector, I can assure you. It's just a matter of Nigeria will feel like Sri Lanka. <laughs> we'll not be able to fulfill our credit. We'll not be able to, to meet up with our obligations. Because 78, that's how many percent? You just have 20, 22 percent for capital project. Nobody runs a nation like that. Nobody runs its life like but, that. But, but GJ and Johnson. Not hmm. Yes. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead now. And government is not providing enough explanation and justification. Only. As far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of wastages. Well, Jide Johnson, you, you talk about uh, capital project enough not being for capital project. If you want to look at, you know, the history of our budgeting and how we do budget over time, there's really nothing different. We haven't really ever paid That's attention nice. to, you know, capital projects in our budgeting. And there's always, it, it's a phrase that's very popular that says that uh, if you want to see a developing nation on the economy, then you would want to pay attention to how much has been budgeted for capital project. And most of the time, if not all the times, you look at the budget from, you, you know, a very long time, 1999, if you want to say. We seem to pay attention to, uh, recurrent expenditure and that's what's used to run government so we, we just it feels like we borrow money to pay salary and that's what it is what's left to we borrow we borrow money to satisfy the taste of the political elites that's the reality we all live with them we all see them we knew look I've said this how? What was the word of those that are parading themselves as presidential candidates in 1999? What's their financial worth? And what is their financial worth now? In 2022. So what we have done is to affect the next of the political class who have made themselves rich at the expense of Nigeria. So they are borrowing money to satisfy their taste, to, to fund their lifestyle, their lifestyle and that of their family. Because how would you be borrowing money for personal cost, for recurrent expenditure? You know that time, people borrow money to fund capital projects. For example, if you build a rail system and borrow money to build the rail system that creates a network of rail, let's say mass transit in Lagos, for example, you to be there for the next 100 years. So you can borrow it today and for the next 50, 60 years, those that are enjoying it will pay for it. But you know what? They will borrow money just to be like the light rate from Badagri to Lagos Island. They will borrow money to build a BRT lanes and buy BRT buses. The project you will not see, the money you will not see. The money will go into private pockets and they will, will, will borrow money again to service those debts. And, that, that's, that's, that's the reality of public administration in Nigeria, across the states, across the local government, even to federal government. And it's unfortunate. 
So, but Jide Johnson, do you think that Nigerians are not bothered about whether subsidy will be removed or not? Because it feels like, uh, you know, at this point, we're still deliberating. Say, uh, you have another head of saying that uh, labor governors agree on subsidy removal behind closed doors. Uh, that's what it is. Should subsidy Why be removed you? or not removed? Looking at the situation, should we go ahead and remove subsidy? Do you think that Nigerians okay, would, would, would be okay with it? What are they subsidizing? Petrol. Government, no, go back to the record. All we need to do is to do a content analysis of TV programs or radio program and deception of this administration. When they move it from 97 Naira to 145, what were, what were we told? When the prices of petroleum was high from 97, to 145. What were we told? There's no subsidy on kerosene. There's no subsidy on diesel. There's no subsidy on jet A4. So, who, what are they subsidizing? I'm asking you. This present government met it at 97 naira. They led the protest when it was, when Jonathan is to 101 naira or something around that figure. I think more than one or 120. They led the program. The same Nigerian group, these same people in government. And when they came to power, they said it's not sustainable. They said they removed it and we moved to 145. Hmm. So who is deceiving who? These are public records. This is not even nothing. And so the media should not help them to amplify the lie. This is utter deception as far as I'm concerned. Because according to government, when the justification they provided in increasing the price of PMS was that they are removing the subsidy. How many times do you remove? Is it okay? Is there is there another word for remove? Once you have removed something. Can you remove from what you have removed again? Maybe we remove. No, uh, we remove. The government said we have reduced. <laughs> government did not use the term reduction. So the media should not help the government in perpetrating lies. We hold the society a truthful account. This present government said that they have removed the subsidy when it was high from one. 97 to 145. Now it is 197 that they are selling it. So, which subsidy are they paying? Hmm. I want to know. I, 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 I am giving the government the benefit of doubt. I don't know. I just want to be enlightened and I want to be adequately informed. And I, I reserve the right to be informed by my government because. I am the employer of those in government. We are the employers. It is people that employ them. We are the ones that put them to be in charge of the affairs, to rule, to, to, to rule over this nation, to superintend over this nation's affairs. J.D. So Johnson, quickly, no. as we coast this conversation down now, and on the punch, we get back there again. It talks about revenue falls by 1.89 trillion naira. And uh, Nigerians face tougher times because in all of this now, states and federal government will be crippled or will cripple. This is what, you know, the Finance Commissioner's Forum, I quoted to say, uh, you know, National Forum of uh, Finance Commissioners. They are saying that, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy. I mean, it feels like we're, we're into it right now. Maybe what we're faced with is, is just a little. Because uh, first of all, you want to look at the fact that there's a new identity for the NNPC. And we also hear reports that we don't know what the state of remittance would be. Will the NNPC still be remitting to uh, the coffers, the national coffers? And what happens? Because you know that states would always go every other time, you know, to the federation account to get, you know, the share and share all of that. And that's what they are dependent on because uh, the, the say states are not really self-sufficient apart from taxes. And what are you taxing now at the end of the day? So... What do you make of this situation? Just in a, a minute. No. 
don't be carried away with government cosmetic um, policies. Remember the fact that as surrounded the era. So the NNPC privatization, what 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 actually has government provided cops? No matter how many cosmetics you put on a chimpanzee, you could do or uh, you put on on a baboon, do even do share similar attributes with, with almost again, it will still be a baboon. So don't be carried away with what government is doing. It's just the government is just trying to score a political point with the NFP system like they did with the inner era. It's, there's no outright um did they, have they listed the company on the floor of the London Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange and I just to buy shares? You do all of that before. You see, Messi, in one of the stories, the Attorney General, the, the Auditor General, uh, the Accountant General of the Federation, the former one, would, would be arranged by EFCC. You saw the amount of money is too. That's just. That's just the account container. Now imagine the director of finance in all ministries and departments and agencies of government. If one individual could steal that amount of money and there's no there's no there's no red flag being raised, there's nothing within the system to curtail him to steal that huge amount of money, then you know this mess we have found ourselves. That's one. Well, GD you just... recall the one that was appointed as acting account general. Who came out and said and released the report that government has been borrowing money to pay salaries of staff for the past few months? What happened to him? Jide what Johnson. happened to him? Well, we have to um, let it slide at this point. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure hanging out with you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful weekend. You too, G.D. Johnson. Uh, we have been speaking with G.D. Johnson and it's a pleasure. We look forward to sharing his thoughts on some of the big stories that will be making the rounds next week, all things being equal. Uh, that's where we call it a wrap on Off the Press for the week. We take a break now, but just before that break, let's tell you what happened today in history. And when we return, we'll be looking at the outbreak of Marburg virus in Ghana.